Hello, my name is Kyle Nicely, and I'm doing my presentation over Joseph Hayden and Symphony Number no. 94. Joseph Hayden was also known as Franz Joseph Hayden. He was an Austrian composer during the 18th century. He was known for his classical style music composition, and he was known as the father of the string quartet and the symphony. He was born in March 1732. He provided musical talent at a young age as his cousin was a chorister. He was invited to the, one of the most famous cathedral, cathedrals in Vienna as he was a chorister there for nine years until he was let go of his position because his voice changed. After that, he was taught by a famous Italian composer known as Niccolo Papora. He was eventually invited to serve Prince Palatal Enterhazy as he conducted the orchestra at the castle and composed symphonies, string quartets, and chamber music. Often he traveled to Vienna as he created a friendship with Wolfgang Amidius Mozart. As new leadership at the castle occurred, the prince did not enjoy music as well as the previous one, so he let go of Hayden and other composers. After that, Joseph Hayden traveled to London two separate times, and he created 12 symphonies during those two visits. One of those famous symphonies would be Symphony Number no. 94. After his first visit to London, he traveled to Germany and met Beethoven. Um, he also quoted a quote below saying, Beethoven will one day be considered one of, the, one of Europe's greatest composers, and I shall be proud to be called his teacher. Today there is an, a, a, a song that Hayden created, and it is used as the Austrian national anthem. Some accomplishments of Joseph Hayden would be that he created 108 symphonies, 68 string quartets, 32 divermentis for small orchestras, 126 trios for baritone, viola, and cello. He also created 29 trios for piano, violin, and cello, 21 trios for two violins and cello, along with 47 piano sonatas. He also created 20 operas, 14 masses, 6 Ontarios, and 2 cello concertos. The three famous compositions of Joseph Hayden would be Symphony No. 94, as it is known as Surprise Symphony, along with Symphony No. 104, which was his last symphony before his passing. And the last one would be Missa in Augustus, one of his last masses before his passing. I picked Symphony Number no. 94 as the famous composition that I was analyzing. It is also nicknamed the Surprise Symphony and Symphony Number no. 94 in G major. It is known as a Surprise Symphony because there is a surprising loud chord. Um, he also created this symphony in London. There is a quote below that describes the symphony. As I state, it begins with a generally lively movement that offers several contrasting melodies. The second movement proceeds at a gentler pace, though, the though with the movement of surprise, and the third movement is dance-flavored, specifically resembling the then-popular minute, a pre predecessor of the waltz. The last movement is the liveliest of all, with brisk and scurrying ideas that bring the piece to an energetic conclusion. The reason for the surprise symphony was to obviously surprise the audience, create something new, and to impress his former student. The Surprise Symphony, or Symphony No. 94, is also taught at the International Baccalaureate to the students there. Uh, the Symphony No. 94 is also relevant today because it is taught to students in multiple institutions. Joseph Hayden is also known as the father of the symphony as he created the string quartet and very popular for his symphonies. And he even inspired future composers like Mozart and Beethoven. The two, um, the two movements that I decided to create similarities and differences about were the classical era and the romantic era. The classical music was elegant, as that differed from the romantic era. era. The remote, romantic music was complex and reached emotion. Brass and woodwinds became more advanced in the Romantic period. Symphonies became one piece instead of movements during the, during the Romantic period compared to the Classical period. Both Classical and Romantic periods incorporated orchestras. Piano was the most popular instrument in both periods, and the Classical music was still popular in the Romantic period. Here are my references. I appreciate you guys for listening to my presentation. Thank you.